Praise the Lord, everyone. So glad that you could join us for this Easter Sunday message. And we're looking forward to sharing some songs with you and also presenting the word of the Lord. Let's open in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we are so thankful for this day. So thankful, dear Lord God, that you are alive, that you are on the throne, and that, Father, you are controlling everything that's going on all around us. And we just pray, dear Lord Jesus, that this message would reach out to each and every one, that we would join together in your spirit, and that we celebrate this Easter Sunday, this Resurrection Sunday with you, with joy unspeakable and full of glory. We're looking forward, dear Lord Jesus, to the moving of your spirit and to, Father, your healing touch and the miracles that you are able to perform. Be with us now, Lord. Help us to focus and to worship upon you, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We have some songs that we're going to sing, some choruses, uh, to get things started here. If that same spirit that raised us from the dead
your Bible out and turn with me once again to John chapter 20. John chapter 20. If you watched the Sunday School lesson for today, you'll recognize that we were reading in John chapter 20 and I suggested during that lesson that we'd be coming back once again to this particular chapter to look at a few aspects in a little more detail. It's really uh, on my heart to share with you that the Easter event is not a one-time thing. It's not one day and then it's over and it's gone. But as God's people, there are things about what we see here during the resurrection that we need to maintain and continue on with throughout the year, each and every day of our Christian journey and our Christian walk. And so that's what I want to really drive uh, home to you uh, in this message, that we're thankful for Christ's resurrection. We praise and thank the Lord for that. It is foundational to our Christian faith the idea of eternal life and rising from the grave is something that's critical in our faith as a part of that foundation of Jesus' teaching. But I want to stress that we don't want to be just main event type of Christians. Now, what do I mean by that? <clears throat> well. We don't want to be just Christians at Christmas, I would consider that a main event, or at Easter, and or at Easter. We don't want to be just Christians at weddings and at funerals. It's important that we take what we see in the Word of God and we apply it each and every day of our lives. So, as I was thinking about this, um, and wanting to stress what I've written down, just looking at my notes here, the ongoing call, ongoing call for Christians to demonstrate God's characteristics. So I want to look at two characteristics in this particular event from John chapter 20. I'm going to group these characteristics into two big categories um, and use those and then just provide you with some other examples in scripture because I think it's very very important um, for us to do that and to look at this event and recognize that it is an ongoing process. I'm taking those words slightly from a definition of the word event. Again, looking it up, a very short little definition. An event is a single occurrence of a process. A single occurrence of a process. So today, we remember and we thank the Lord for the single event, Christ's resurrection, leaving that tomb behind, leaving death behind. That's a single event. And we thank God for that, you know, because Jesus didn't have to come back and do that again. He is never going to have to do that again. The price was paid once. The lamb, Jesus, went to the cross once. That sacrifice was made once. Single events. But they're part of an ongoing process. And it's that ongoing process that I think we really need to grab a hold of today as God's people. Traditionally, this is one of the days where churches are packed. Now this year, of course, is very, very different. But normally, this is when we see people that don't attend church on a regular basis, they come for this one particular event. But there's more to it than that. And as God's people, we're not to be just that single event type of Christian. We are part of that ongoing process. So let's look at the characteristics of that process and 
just reflect on how we're doing with those in our own lives, and then encourage one another to maybe pick up the slack, if there is some slack there, and to recognize this is something that God is encouraging us to do each and every day. When we look at John chapter 20, there are some things here that I'm going to put into the characteristic uh, or the category of doing. And there are some things here that I'm going to say are in the category of showing. Doing and showing. So let's look first at the doing. And I'm not going to necessarily read each of these verses again, but let's refresh our memories. We had some doing. We saw, first of all, Mary. Mary going very, very early in the morning to the tomb. This was an act of doing. This was something that she did. There was action involved in that. We had Mary then running to tell the disciples that, you know, the tomb is empty. And then, of course, we have uh, the two disciples, John and Peter, running back to the tomb, doing. There's action involved. There's something happening here. Uh, going back to see what happens. And then we have Mary, who, after Jesus speaks with her, and uh, she recognizes that it's Jesus, she does what Jesus tells her to do. Obedience, action, movement. God's people are supposed to be active. And I'm pulling that from this particular chapter because I think it's something that we have to remember. Not just on Easter are we supposed to be active. And our activity is not just about coming together in the house of the Lord. Absolutely critical, absolutely important. I'm not saying anything negative about that at all. But our doing needs to extend beyond the walls of the sanctuary, the church, the temple, uh, the tabernacle, the building that you come together in to worship. And it has to be something that's happening each and every day. Not just for the main event. Used to be, I'm saying used to be, because I'm not sure it's as much of a tradition as it was in the past. People would get, you know, a special Easter outfit. Or once upon a time, we could even speak about Easter bonnets that people, uh, the women, would get to, to wear, especially for that Easter service. These are things that were done for that one event. Fine. But if it stops there, we're not doing what the Lord has asked us to do. Looking at other verses that have to do with doing, James chapter 2. James chapter 2. A lot of verses in this particular chapter. We could read the whole thing. We're not going to. I would encourage you to do so. But James here speaks a lot about faith. And he connects faith with doing. He calls it works. What does the scripture tell us? James 2. Let's read verses 17 and 18. Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Let me just stop there for a second. Mary going to the tomb early in the morning. A demonstration of her faith. Now she wasn't expecting Jesus to be gone, but she was going in faith to do something out of respect for her Lord and her Savior. She connected the two together. And so, you see, the idea of faith and works, they combine together. Going on, same chapter, verse 24. 
You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Of course, our best example of faith and works combining together, well, stop and think about it. Jesus went to the cross. Jesus went to the cross, suffered on the cross, died, rose again. All of those things are faith, and yet there's so much works involved there, right? I have to ask myself, did Jesus really have to physically go to the cross? Did he have to perform that work? Well, God said yes, he did. And so there's work involved in the Spirit's moving. And so Jesus demonstrated that for us. He demonstrates it actually at a very early age. And if you turn to Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2, Jesus, very young at this point in time, says this, and he said unto them, verse 49, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? So as Christians, there is business for us to be doing. And so very, very often our agendas can get full of all kinds of business for ourselves, for other people, and all valid, but let's not forget the Father's business. And as God's children, as God's followers, we need to be about the Father's business. Going back to Mary, Mary was about the Father's business when she went to the tomb in the morning. She was about the Father's business when Jesus told her to go to the disciples and tell them that he was risen. She was doing the Father's business. Everything else was set aside. And what Jesus wanted her to do moved and was at the top of the list. So Jesus here, as a young boy in the temple, not having gone back home with his parents, they were looking for him, and that was his response. Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? See, there was a priority there. There was some doing that was involved. I don't want to jump to the end of where we're going here in John 20, but just recognize that Jesus, as he returns and he speaks to his disciples, he speaks to them about doing. And that's where... I'm wrapping all of this together. You'll also remember that when we looked at the Sunday School lesson in that particular chapter, I spoke a few times about evidence. About the evidence that Jesus provided, that God provided, that in fact, Jesus had risen. That in fact, this really was Jesus. It wasn't an imposter. It wasn't somebody else. He hadn't been stolen from the grave. All of these things were verified through evidence that God provided, that Jesus provided to the people that were around him. I'm changing the word slightly now, and instead of using evidence, I'm saying showing. Okay? And in that chapter, going back then to John 20, what did we see? Where was the evidence? Do you remember from the Sunday School lesson? I suggested to you that when they saw the grave clothes that were neatly placed where Jesus had been lying, that that was evidence that this was not done in haste, that he had not been stolen away, but that this had been, in a sense, a very calm event, that it had been planned. This was God's doing. And the grave clothes were left behind. It's not something that Jesus carried with him. He left the grave. He left death. 
He left all of those things behind. It was a way of showing that God was moving. I spoke and I mentioned to you as evidence that it was Jesus that had risen. How did Jesus prove that to Mary? Do you remember? He spoke her name. It was as simple as Jesus speaking her name. And Mary in that instant recognized, this is not a gardener, this is not some stranger, this is not somebody who carried Jesus away, this is Jesus himself. And so the evidence was there for Mary that this was in fact Jesus who had risen. When Jesus shows himself to his disciples, again there is evidence, there is showing that is happening there. Jesus shows them the nail prints in his palms. He shows them the scar on his side. He demonstrates that this is in fact Jesus. Now where am I going with this? This is really important. Because you see, as God's people, it's great to fill the churches on Easter. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. And I'm looking forward to the opportunity to do that again. But the demonstration of our faith has to go beyond filling a parking lot or filling a, a building on a particular day. There is an ongoing testimony. There is an ongoing demonstration of our faith that needs to come forth from each and every one of us to the world around us to say, Jesus is alive. He's still alive today. Just as Jesus demonstrated he was alive, God was showing those around him that Jesus was alive, he had risen. We have the same responsibility, I'll use that word, responsibility today to demonstrate that Christ is alive today. He lives in us. He lives inside his followers, his people, his children, the born again. God's people. And that is not something that we just demonstrate on one day. It is a testimony that we carry with us as we are doing. So as we are out and about doing our Father's business, we carry with us the testimony that Christ is alive in us. And that He changes things. And that He has given us that promise that hope, that joy, that peace, remember Jesus said, is he was giving his disciples, I'm just looking at it right here, peace be unto you. All of these things are a testimony that we carry with us and must show the world each and every day. Not just on the event of Easter, but what about tomorrow? What about next week? We have to carry these things with us. We have to uh, show the character of our Lord, our God, in our lives each and every day. There are some scriptures I want to give you. I just picked some out that demonstrate that throughout the Bible. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. To show thyself approved unto God. To show. To demonstrate. You see, when we come into God's presence, we come to worship, we come to praise Him, to thank Him. Oft times we come with our petitions, our prayers, our requests. All of these things are great. We come to learn from Him. And so in your studies, though we are not gathering together, I know online I've seen uh, another particular congregation doing a Bible study. 
All of these things are still critical. And we are to study. Why? To show. Okay? So uh, it's really important for me as a pastor that we understand that our Christian faith is not to be hidden inside a Sunday school classroom or inside the church, but it is something that has to be carried with us. It is a part of us. It flows out of us as God's Spirit moves in us to show people that we have studied, that we have been in God's presence, that we are aware of what the Scripture says and aware of what we say we believe. It's important that we have that knowledge. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Let me read here verses 42 to 45. As soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And he straightly charged him, and forthwith sent him away, and saith unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. <clears throat> but he went out and began to publish it much, and to blaze abroad the matter, insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in, in desert places, and they came to him from every quarter. Now, there's much here in those verses, but what I wanted to sort of focus on here was there was a healing, a cleansing that took place. Jesus tells this particular person that he should go and show himself to the priest. That's actually referring back to Old Testament. I wrote it down here, Leviticus, Leviticus 14, chapter 14. If you're interested in that, Jesus there was actually doing as Leviticus 14 suggested because in Leviticus, it tells us that basically the priest needs to proclaim that a person is cleansed following a disease of the skin. And so leprosy, a disease of the skin, Jesus was following what God had told Moses was required. Um, and so back in Leviticus, it speaks of that. So he, was, he told this person, don't go and tell anybody, go to the priest. So the idea being then the priest would verify that he had been cleansed. And then, I would imagine, at that point, as the priest declares that this cleansing has taken place, then, of course, that person would be able to share that testimony to everybody. But it had been verified at that point. We see here that this person was so thrilled by what had happened, it tells us in verse 45, he went out and began to publish it much. In other words, he told everybody. He made it public. He testified. He showed people, this is what God has done. This is what Jesus has done for me. And that created a little bit of a problem for Jesus in that it says it was he was so popular at that point, he had to withdraw himself into desert places. He, in other words, he couldn't get into the city because the throng of people you know, were around him. He was famous for what he had done, for what, the cleansing that God uh, had done. But it's a good example, again, of the importance that showing the world what God has done, it's an important thing. And it is something that God asks us to do. One more verse with regards to showing, if I may, turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. And this is a familiar section of scripture. And we have choruses and things that come from this. But Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Glorify your Father which is in heaven. 
I can't end the idea of doing and showing without emphasizing that it's not about you or me. It's not about glory for you or glory for me or for any man-made organization. It is about giving praise and honor and glory to God. And so we're not coming to church on a main event, Christmas and Easter, because we need everybody to see our new outfit and it's just the thing to do. We come to worship and honor and praise God on a day like today. Because God is the center of everything. And it is the miracle of that resurrection that we're praising the Lord for. Because, you know what? It's for you and it's for me that God did all of this. This was all part of a demonstration of his love. I guess that's some more doing, isn't it? And showing. But the point here is that we're doing and we're showing the world what our Lord has done because we are honoring and glorifying Him. And that scripture there makes it very, very clear, right? That they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Because you see, it is God who gives us the strength, the wisdom, and the knowledge to do the doing. Go back to Mary. Go back there to where we started in John chapter 20. And I mentioned this in the Sunday School lesson, but I have to say it again. When Jesus spoke to Mary and he sent her to go and tell the disciples, remember, he told her to tell the disciples what he had said. And so it is always about God's message. It is always about God's word. And that chapter, which I am going to turn back to now as I close, when we look at the doing and we look at the showing that we have demonstrated here in this particular chapter, which I am suggesting to you is something that God wants us to do each and every day. I come back to that verse 21. Because from there, Jesus begins to teach and to send his disciples out to work. And he says to them in verse 21, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Not just on Easter not just on Christmas, not just at a wedding, and not just at a funeral. God is sending out his people, Jesus was sending out his disciples to share the good news. And today, God is saying through his scripture, he's saying to you and to me, go out and share the good news each and every day. Each and every day. It's not just an event. It is a process. It is a journey. It is our life. And I want to give you just a closing picture of that. A verbal picture of that. I scribbled down some thoughts about this. And in my mind, again, it came up this way. And I'm using a comparison between an athlete and a Christian. And I was thinking about those athletes that work so very, very hard for one event, the Olympics. And I was thinking about that because, of course, this year, the Olympics were postponed. And so we have all of these people that have been working day after day, week after week, for months and months, for years, some for their entire lifetime, running towards, moving towards one event, the Olympics. And yet, I put this down. An athlete is not just an athlete during the main, excuse me, during the main events. 
They are athletes all the time. You see, somebody doesn't just wake up and say, I'm going to go and perform at the Olympics. No. They begin training long before that event. And, by the way, they start again as soon as that event is over. In other words, the event is just part of a process for them. And in the same way, okay, Christians are not just to be Christians at Christmas, Easter, or wedding, and funerals, but we are to be Christians all the time. All the time. Our church is empty today. It's Easter Sunday. An important event. But you know what? It's still an important event. Regardless of whether there are people in the pews or not, Christ is risen. And so you see, we don't just hang our faith and our Christianity on that one event. That event is part of our journey, our process. And it's critical that tomorrow, when you wake up, you are still doing God's business. We are still prepared to share our testimony. We are still prepared to put our faith and works together in a world that really needs that. People need to see that. And as God's people, we need to demonstrate that. Because Christ arose. That tomb is empty. It remains empty. And from that point forward, it was never filled again. The Lord never had to do the same thing again. And as God's people, we have a daily task to do. To do as Jesus said, as he sent them, God is sending us today. Let us pray. Father, I do thank you so much for your words. Oftentimes, I am overwhelmed by what you are trying to teach me. Many times, I have so many things floating around inside my mind that I worry as to whether or not I can clearly communicate your thoughts to others. And I thank you, Lord. I believe you help me with that. And as God's people, I'm thankful that we can come to you each and every day and we can ask you for your help. We can ask you for your guidance. And we can thank you every day. Whether it's Easter or not Easter, whether it's Christmas or not Christmas, we can thank you. Because in the life of a Christian, in my life, in the lives of my brothers and sisters that believe and follow you, Every day is a miracle day. Every day is another day to celebrate and thank you for what you've done. To remember Easter, whether it's Easter Sunday or not, but to remember, Lord, all week, all year, all of our lives, that you rose, that the tomb is empty, and that it was all part of your plan my Lord, I thank you for the way you have worked all of that out. And so, Father, let us put our trust and faith and confidence in you, recognizing that you are able to work all things out. Recognizing, Lord, that you have business for us to do. And so, Lord, I pray, lead and guide us about our Father's business. Help us, dear Lord Jesus, to have a testimony of what you have done for your honor and for your glory. So that when we see and when we hear that you are sending us, that we recognize, dear Lord Jesus, that you have equipped us, that we are prepared, and that, dear Father, we are doing this for you, for your kingdom ministry. Help us to be those ambassadors for you. Lord, I just pray that as we remember 
the great victory that you won this day, that we thank you for those great victories each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen.